Covering the High Plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Simplet, this is High Plains Today. Hi everybody, welcome to this special edition of High Plains Today. I have the privilege of having here in the studio U.S. Congressman Tim Camp of the 1st District. Congressman, how are you today? I am doing great. Stop by. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, my pleasure. You're my out pleasure. on the circuit this week. Oh, absolutely. We're trying to get our 63 town halls done, and we made a lot of progress uh, in this past week. We've done uh, 10 town halls, which is about 320-some <laughs> since I started four years ago. So it's always a good time to get out and listen. I know, and you've always been very good about getting out and about. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think far too many, many of my colleagues spend far too much time in Washington and they lose track of what they're up there for, and that's to represent, in my case, 700,000 Kansans. So how often do you get back to Kansas? Every week. Every, Every week. week. So my wife and uh, four kids, our right. farm family, home and hard, it's all in Kansas. So, uh, you know, I, I'm up there the days we vote. The other days I'm home home in the district, and it's a way to stay in touch and also keep your keep your wife happy too. So That's important. <laughs> that that is. is. The old saying, mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? Yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's the way it goes. Okay, so, I, so when you come up, and I know you have four children at home, so when you get home, is anybody in trouble? Does she ever uh, use the, wait till your dad gets home? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and also, well, wait till he gets home and help you on your math homework. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, don't have, I don't have a math gene, so that isn't a problem with yeah. me. All right, so some of the things I want to talk to you about is most recently, you know, we, we or you guys uh, in, the, in the House, uh, elected a new speaker in Paul Ryan from Wisconsin. And I know going into that, you were pretty much opposed, you know, being over on, on, the, on the far right, where in the Tea Party and the caucus and everything. And you were pretty vocal about that. But then when the vote came up, you went along with the vote and voted with the rest of the Kansas delegation yeah. for Speaker Ryan. Yeah, there are two votes for Speaker, but backing up, uh, I mean, it's a huge step forward. Every Kansas I talked to was tired of John Boehner. I mean, he's very vindictive in retribution. He kicked me off committees because he didn't like the way I voted. And uh, so we're hopeful with the new speaker. But uh, one thing we did ask of Paul Ryan or any candidate for speaker, you've got to change this process. We can't write bills in back rooms, whether it's Nancy Pelosi or John Boehner. And actually, the last thing John Boehner did was this massive backroom deal of $1.5 trillion in new borrowing. And, and no one really knew or claimed to know what was in it. Somebody knew, uh, somebody on K Street knew, but what Paul Ryan did promise, it took some effort, promised to open that process up, no more retribution, and I supported Daniel Webster initially. Mm -hmm. Daniel talked about the way we were going to open this up instead of a top-down approach by one speaker and a few key staffers and even more lobbyists, it's bottom-up. And Daniel Webster uh, set it up and talked about the ways it would go in a uh, principle-based institution, and that's the, the model that uh, Paul Ryan has uh, adopted. And so I voted with uh, many others, support Daniel Webster in the conference. But once we went to the floor, I supported Paul Ryan. And I think it's a good choice. And Daniel Webster, just for everybody, was is from Florida, correct? He's from Florida. He he served as Speaker of the Florida House, and he changed that that institution. I I, I remember uh, serving in state legislature, knowing about the changes made down there. So again, so much in this House deals with. Well, what does the speaker think? You know what? It shouldn't be about the speaker. It should be about what the majority of the majority wants, and in my case, what the Republican majority wants, and that's what Paul Ryan said. If the issue isn't something the Republicans want to do, why would we be moving it to the floor? So you have gotten on board with, with Representative Ryan, the speaker, speaker Ryan, and so you've, you feel okay about backing him. Yeah, we're already seeing changes. We had more amendments, more debate, more votes in one week First week of Paul Ryan's speakership than we did for 10 months, the previous 10 months under John Boehner. That could be a good thing, because everybody <laughs> always says that there isn't anything getting done up there, right? Well, we worry about getting things done. But okay. People deserve to know where we're at on issues. Sure. And, and, and Boehner would occasionally complain that, oh, people come to him and ask him, let's not have a vote on that. I, I just said, hey, bring it to the floor. Let's have the debate, have the votes, because I think we're going to win, uh, win or lose. Uh, Usually with John Boehner, he already worked out a deal, cooked a deal with Nancy Pelosi that most Republicans oppose, and that happened again on this super-duper budget deal, which uh, which we hopefully talk about Yeah, later. where the debt ceiling was raised, right? $1.5 trillion is the estimate. And what did we get in exchange for giving President Barack Obama another $1.5 trillion of borrowing? Uh, nothing. Well, $86 billion in new spending, and, and but the problem to me is spending. But gosh darn, if you're going to borrow $1.5 trillion, at least have a way to pay it back. 
True. And, and, and that, that didn't happen. It's just add to the credit card, send the bill to our kids, and it'll all work out, I guess, according to uh, you know, Speaker Boehner, former Speaker Boehner. Okay, before we go to, before we go to break and, and we get off this topic, what about the, the motion that, that Speaker Ryan has come up with about vacating the chair? Initially, where, where are we at on yeah, that? Initially, uh, Paul Ryan says, hey, I don't want to uh, have that rule as part of the House rules. This was a rule that Thomas Jefferson wrote for the right. U.S. Senate back when he was vice president. It was adopted by the House, I think, in about 1830 so, and said that, you know what, if a majority wants to remove the speaker, they should. And that's for any, you know, I served as president of the 4-H club. I served on four, uh, <laughs> FFA. Every board has a way to remove bad leadership. And, uh, you know, and, and Paul Ryan backed off of that and says, okay, we won't change that. Uh, but initially he was demanding he would have the ability to basically serve as speaker for life, and that's, that's not good in any True. institution. And so we won on that one. So that was part of the things that's initially said we want to change that. Well, and I think that will go forward as far as speaking where this Congress wants to go from the standpoint of what was it last year when the Senate, the Democrats in the Senate or a couple of years ago went in there and just changed all the rules there too in the mm -hmm. middle of the session. Yeah, yeah. We will have a, a rules package change that put together, which I think conservatives, liberals and moderates and Republican Party, I think Democrats are going to like as well which again, allows more debate, requires more time, requires more members to do more work. You know, in, in the state legislature, the committees do a lot of work. In Washington, they do so little in so many of the committees. So uh, some of the committees, like the VA I'm on, I really think we do a lot. Occasionally, they do some in the appropriations committees. But a lot of times, they have uh, meaningless meetings or no meetings at all. But you're and on TV a lot that way. They seem to be on TV <laughs> a lot. So, you know, you got loves them. You got to have investigation <laughs> hearings, but when are they getting things done? And, right. and that's a question. It's hard to answer because many times there's not okay. much getting done. All right. Stick around. Stay right there. We're going to come back with more with the Congressman right after this. You're watching High Plains today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. And we're back. I'm joined in the special edition of High Plains today with U.S. Congressman Kim Camp from the 1st District right here in Kansas. Now, one thing that's come out in the news lately is the crop insurance program that was signed by President Obama, and there is a giant cut in there for farm-based states like Kansas. Yeah. Well, what happened is uh, John Boehner, Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, and Harry Reid, and the president went in the back room and agreed to this deal, which is this uh, massive uh, $1.5 trillion in new borrowing authority, is the estimate, $86 billion worth of spending increases and somehow tucked in there was a $3 billion cut to crop insurance. And what that means is, is basically we think that would uh, eliminate crop insurance. You know, part of the deal in the last farm slash food stamp bill was, okay, we're going to get rid of the ad hoc payments, get rid of the direct subsidies, and it's going to be a crop insurance program, which is consistent with uh, what we need to do internationally. And, uh, but when you pull out this $3 billion, it could estimate in the end crop insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that was not the deal in the farm bill. Well, we asked John Boehner about this. Where did this come from? You were in the room. No one else was. No one seemed to know. The president seemed, nobody seemed to know where this cut came from. So nobody, okay, so what you're telling me is we have this big bill that was signed, yep. but nobody knows where the $3 billion cut, I mean, it just snuck they, in they, there? They, yeah, nobody knows who <laughs> wanted it in there because nobody claimed credit for it. Okay. I was in a meeting with a bunch of other farm state lawmakers and said, hey, you know, we got ways we can cut in USDA. It's mostly on the food stamp side, but where did this come from? And uh, they promise us, okay, we'll fix it after we pass it. Seriously. And so. All right, now that sounds a lot like the Affordable Care Act. Oh, yeah. And that, I mean, that sounds a lot like. Now, is this something Nancy Pelosi said? Because that's what she said on the Affordable Care <laughs> this Act. This is what John Boehner said, okay. former speaker. All right. All right. Uh, both speakers. <laughs> and so they're going to fix it between now and December 11th uh, when they pass the rest of the spending bills. Remember, they passed a spending package that only went for 10 weeks. And uh, so, but uh, there's a couple deals running around. You got a budget deal, you got a spending package. Is it confusing? Yes, I think they want it that way. But to claim no one knew where $3 billion in cuts came from, you know, and 
you know, I voted again and again to make cuts. We've already made the cuts in agriculture. What about everybody else? So, why, I mean, and you're right. So why do we continue to have such partisanship up there and this against that and make it so confusing so that common people like me out in southwest Kansas are going, I don't know what's in that. Well, most, I mean, how does that I would work? say most members often don't know really what's in a bill. Most of them don't even pick it up. I was just at a town hall where a gentleman handed me a bill and says, hey, take a look at this bill. I said, I think most members of Congress have really never looked at a bill. I really read one. And, but this one was thrown on the floor of the House, 40 hours to look at it. No time for people on the outside to get a real sense. And then it was said, well, this $3 billion of cuts is in here that would devastate crop insurance. But don't worry, we're going to fix it. And, but I, will say, I would uh, say this wasn't partisan. This was pure bipartisanship. It just didn't involve the whole Congress. The Ag Committee had no say on it. Uh, the Appropriations Committee Wouldn't that be no important, say. though, for the Ag Committee to you have, think, you have think. a little input? Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and you know, actually, some of the Ag Committee chairmen, I think, voted for it, knowing there was a cut in there because they promised they'd fix it between now and December 11th, and, uh, which I couldn't support that. I couldn't support the, the borrowing without figuring a way to pay it back. But it's, it's more of the Washington way. But this was before. This is prior to Speaker Ryan. This is John Boehner's, as he said, his outgoing gift to Congress. This is a gift. You're going to thank me for this, is what he said. Well, I, I, I saw an eighth grader today. He wasn't very thankful for another <laughs> $1.5 trillion. He knows he gets to pay well, back. Well, that's right. Exactly. And, and, and that's what he said. Let's just put it on the credit card. And uh, it's good for Washington, but it's not good for our future. So right now, there's no inkling whatsoever on how they're going to fix this. I mean, December that's December 10th is not that far away. Yeah, yeah the, rule would, the rules of the House and the Senate, budgetary rules, require you find $3 billion of cuts elsewhere to match these. I, I don't know how they're going to do that. Uh, why didn't they fix it before they passed it? Let's fix it after we passed it. So this is one, again, agriculture has given up billions of dollars in spending. We said, okay, we'll, we'll take the deal. We'll, we'll take a crop insurance program, which is a pretty radical change. When you're looking at $4 corn, can't make a living on that. You look at the price of wheat, you know, so you look at, that's what you're paying the crop insurance for. And this uh, would uh, devastate that. And uh, will we fix it? I, 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 I think we will, but I don't know how they're going to fix it between now and December 11th. So and farmers, on this deal, if it, if it goes through and it doesn't get fixed, I mean, farmers are going to be the big loser here, they right? They just signed up for crop insurance. They just signed up for the farm bill for a five-year sign-up. And here's Washington changing the rules just when they got done with the sign-up. So you're going to have a lot of insurance, farm crop insurance companies that are going to say, there's no way I want to be in Absolutely. this. Absolutely. So then they're going to be stuck. It's very similar to Obamacare. They're not going to be stuck. They're going to leave the market. We already have crop insurance companies leaving. We see that on the health insurance side. Uh, and uh, we're afraid you'll be left with one or two or maybe three choices, and that's not much of a choice. Right. The same thing is, is happening with Obamacare. There goes the free Fewer market. Companies. Well, there is no market if you only have one. Well, business. that's true. Yeah. The free market is not there at yeah. all. Yeah. So and, the and farmers, so are, gonna, about the the farmers are the ones that are going to take so the I, hurt. I think we'll fix it. I just don't know how they're going to do it. And I still have no idea why anyone would, would vote for something knowing they had to fix it before the ink was even dry. And then the president has signed it, correct? He has, my understanding. So signed, so. we're okay. So now it's got to come. So all right, in the 30 seconds before we take a break, where are we at now? Does that have to come all the way back around to get fixed, or how's it going to get fixed? They'll pass another bill uh, again in late September. They passed a a temporary budget or a spending package for 10 weeks. As we know, there's 42 more weeks to go. So that spending package is up by December 11th. Between now and December 11th, we got to figure out what we're going to do with crop insurance. How we we fixed that $3 billion hole they created for the next 42 weeks. And uh, as of today, I have no, seen no specific plan that would fix that problem they created with the vote for this uh, massive deal that the president clearly liked and I clearly did not. So. Good luck with that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay. Stay right there. Stick around. And we're going to be back with more with the congressman after this. And welcome back. A special edition of High Plains today. I'm joined by Congressman Tim Hills Camp from we're going to call it the Big First Absolutely. right here in Kansas because it's the majority of Kansas. Huge, huge. It is huge. Yeah. So okay, I know one thing that's very near and dear to your hearts, and it always has been since you've been even a state legislator and now in 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 Washington is Veterans Affairs. And I know you just got done the other day with hearings on the Veterans Administration. Yeah, hearings. Are, are ongoing. Uh, the problems there are too numerous to even count. 
and one time we think we solved something, another problem pops up at the VA, but you're looking at an agency with 320,000 employees. It's the second largest agency in Washington. I think most of the folks there and most of the employees there are doing a great job. What we find out are these political appointees and high-level management, that seems to be where the corruption, there actually is corruption there. We just saw that last week in a hearing where we, we uh, first time in VA committee history subpoenaed specific witnesses to come in and say, hey, what were you doing with this relocation expenses? They had created this little, little scheme that uh, three employees would trade jobs around the country, and they'd move from uh, three different cities. They'd move around, and we have a cap on spending, uh, getting them uh, pay raises. So in getaway that, they all took different positions, reduced their authority, and they all got relocation expenses up to two hundred dollars to $300,000 for those three people. And, uh, and on went, top of their salaries? On top of their salary, yes. It costs the government, we think, $400,000 for three employees to move them, to buy their house, to, to pay them to sell their house in quick fashion. It, it, it's what you typically do, but the numbers were astronomical. We had, I think, a whistleblower let us know about this, or, or a media person we found out, and so we said, come and tell us about your plan, and they wouldn't do it. So they pled, pled the fifth. Supposedly, they're going to be disciplined. That's true, because... There was, I mean, they were being asked questions, and they spouted out the fifth, I mean, which is their right, um, we're right. but and, about and taking the Fifth and, Amendment. And, and, and I have and a responsibility speaking. to assume that there was something <laughs> hidden there. They can take it, and uh, they uh, took the right to avoid self-incrimination, which meant that if they told the truth, they would be, be in trouble. But we also learned just in the last few days another $142 million in bonuses were paid last year to VA employees. I mean... Here we have a, a, a system that there's no accountability or little accountability. They have scandals that are ongoing, and they're still paying out bonuses. Still paying out bonuses for folks that are failing us. And so we passed like a VA accountability bill. It went through the House, and it would give the speaker, or the, excuse me, the head of the VA, the secretary, give him authority to fire underperforming employees. The secretary doesn't want the bill. He doesn't want that authority. He doesn't want to have to do that. Exactly. So with authority comes responsibility. You know, Mr. Secretary and I but, told him there was an independent assessment that said there's a leadership crisis at the VA. And I asked the secretary in a hearing about a month ago, I said, do you agree with this assessment? Chris, he said, yes, I agree with the assessment. There's a leadership crisis. He said, but I can almost quote him directly. He said, it's not my fault. Okay. It is now, your fault. Now but some... it starts at the presidential level. It starts at the secretary level. And there is a culture of non-accountability and corruption that's been around there for years, perhaps decades. But what I can say is we're making changes there. You know, we've got veterans in southwest Kansas now that can get their health care in the local hospital rather than having to get on the road and drive to Amarillo or drive to Wichita. Well, that cases. makes sense. I mean, if, if we can't get these guys to a VA facility, then instead of spending all this money and bonuses and paying people to come out, and let them go to the local hospital yeah and get their treatments and those types of things, and then get reimbursed for that. Yeah, and we generally pay them to drive there. You know, we have the, the, probably the worst case example is in Liberal. Yes. Very new hospital, and, and we can't get a full-time doctor to show up at the VA clinic. They've been promising me that for four years. Moran's been promised that even longer when he served. And I'm saying, okay, if you can't get a doctor, we got 30 or 40 of them just a few blocks away. Why can't they go there? Well, the VA doesn't know if they're good enough for the VA. Well, it's good enough for Medicare. I think they're doing a great job. So we passed the VA Choice Act last summer. The VA didn't like it, uh, which said, you know, under certain circumstances, uh, and, and liberal would be one of those cases where they should be able to receive the care and make that choice. If the veteran still wants to get and drive to liberal or Amarillo, they can do that. But if they want to go see their local doctor, local hospital, and so we see that happening. Literally, we believe hundreds of veterans are already taking care of those, taking advantage of this opportunity. We want to expand that. But again, be clear here, if the veteran likes to, Keep their VA doctor, their VA hospital, their VA uh, appointment schedule, that's fine. But for those that are waiting and uh, or, or don't want to drive that far, let them go to the local hospital. Well, there are some in the media, though, that are saying that, you know, this the, the, the problem with the Veterans Administration is way overblown. It's not as bad as everybody says. Yeah. Ask the 18 veterans we identified that probably died in Phoenix because of VA failure. Now, can we absolutely prove they died because they were on a waiting list for six months to a year or whatever? According to the whistleblowers, yeah. I mean, th this is outrageous. We still have veterans waiting months for care. I had a veteran who was uh, at a town hall in Colby, Kansas last week. And when he was getting out, done with the town hall, he was going to drive to Denver to get his hearing aids. He could have driven 
driven three blocks away and got his hearing aid locally in Colby, but the VA says, no, we want to make you drive to Denver because your time mounts nothing to, to the VA bureaucrat. Let's make it easy for the bureaucracy. That is plain in a, in a Kansas word. That's just stupid. That is wrong. We should fix that. We're trying to fix that. And so I'll call the secretary. I'll call his staff and say, don't make the guy drive to Denver. And they'll try to fix it one at a time. No, we want to fix the system. It's not about money. We're still been pouring money in money hand over fist, and they'll be getting even more money this year. But uh, what we want to do is just give them a choice. And I think with choice comes a little competition. And, and sometimes, well, I believe competition is always good, particularly for the VA system. Congressman, I appreciate you coming by today. Yeah. We've covered a lot of stuff quickly, yeah. quickly, but yeah. that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate you stopping okay. by. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate you your work bet. here. And thank you. We'll see you. up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, ADGL TV.